In this video, we're doing computational limits, and we're just starting the basics of this. So this is part one. And so let's look at example one. So notice the function that we are approaching is a constant function. If we think about the graph of that, that would be a flat line at y equals 4. So no matter what value we're approaching, and no matter what direction we are approaching, our y value will always be 4. And remember, limits are y values. Limits are y values. In example 2, again, our function is a constant. So again, no matter what value or direction we are approaching, the limit of a constant is a constant. In our third example, once again, we are approaching a constant. And it doesn't matter whether we're approaching infinity or any other number, the limit of a constant is a constant. In example 4, our function has now changed from a constant function to the function x. So once we're no longer dealing with a constant, the first thing we always try with computational limits is we simply try plugging in our x value to see if we get a y value out. So it does not matter which direction we're approaching if we get a good answer. If I plug in a 3, we would simply get 3. 3 is a valid and good answer, so we are done. In example 5, our function has been altered to x squared. Again, plugging in does not matter what direction if I plug in a 2. 2 squared is 4. We get a good valid answer. We are done. The example 6. Our function is now a little more complex. 3x squared minus 2x. We're going to plug in our 5 into both x's. So 3 times 5 squared minus 2 times 5. That would be 3 times 25 minus 10, or 75 minus 10. So our limit would be 65. In our next example, uh, now our function is a little more complex. Now we've got a rational function. Still, the first thing we try first is plugging in. If I plug in a 2 on the top, we get a 4 on top. If I plug in a 2 on the bottom, we get a 6 on the bottom. 4, 6 can reduce to 2 thirds. In our next example, now we are approaching negative 3 from the right side. Again, so long as we get a valid answer, we don't care which direction we're coming from. So plug in a negative 3 on top. Plug in a negative 3 on the bottom, we would get a negative 2. Double negative is a positive 3 halves. In our next example, Again, we are plugging in a 0. As long as we get a valid answer, we don't care. On the top, you plug in, you get a 0. On the bottom, you plug in, you get a 1. Remember, 0 over any number is 0, and we are done. 